What is going on, you guys? It's your boy AvriLR32 here, and I am absolutely exhausted, but I want to get this video out so that uh, I can continue packing for the Boca Raton Regional. So smash the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that subscribe button so we can get to 1,000 subscribers. We are getting closer and closer every single day, currently sitting at 934 subscribers. So I wanted to talk about skill in Yu-Gi-Oh! And this is summed up perfectly by this replay that you're about to see. So let's go ahead and go through this. As you can see, it's a sprite mirror match. This is game three of the match. And as you can see, I have side decked in a pointer of the Red Lotus. Really busted ass card, I might add. So let's just go through here and, and see what happens. So uh, when I talk about skill in Yu-Gi-Oh!, I'm not just talking about how you play your cards, but I'm also talking about like, the technical play. I'm talking about what moves do you choose to make? What card do I decide to hit with a pointer of the Red Lotus to give myself the best chance of winning? And especially in grind games, that is when the skill truly shines. And you're going to see that near the end of this duel here. This guy, <laughs> he actually makes the misplay of going for Sky Calvary to most likely Zeus me. Uh, but he can't because he's locked into fucking twos. So he literally made the Sky Cavalry just to run over the Sprite Red, which, okay, you get rid of the negate, but you wasted your Sky Calv. So if he wants to do Zeus, he's going to have to go into Gigantic Sprite. So he's going to slam off everything to Elf. We're going to DD Crow the shit out of the Red. And he's just doing typical Sprite shenanigans. Like, he, he stopped us from making a board. I wouldn't really say that that's skill in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's more just the skill of knowing how to break an opponent's board with hand traps. So it's it's skill in a way, but it's I would say that that's more knowledge, uh, not necessarily just downright skill. Um, now, as you can see here, we, we go for Zeus, and you're probably thinking, well, Avery's just going to get negated. Well, that's why we didn't just detach a material. We uh, kept all of the materials on our originals so that we could detach again. This is why I say that downer is fucking disgusting, because now he's got our Zeus, and this is where you're going to see the skills start coming into play. So we're going to summon Beaver. We're going to activate the effect and get Beaver from Grave. We're going to make the second gigantic, and we're, we're pretty much just trying to make our own totally awesome here, because... Lord knows we need a fucking board at this point because we already know that he's got blue in hand and he's got SWAT. So we need to be able to do something. So I decided to take his Pixies. Uh, I think I end up just linking off with it. Yeah, we just use Elf to get a uh, swap and make Toad. And you're probably thinking, well, Avery, why didn't you like go for something else? I mean, really, well, <laughs> the only option I had was to go for Pixies or like go for his Gigantic and, you know, make a make a gigantic or something on top of that or just link off. I go for pixies because of the fact, again, going into skill, I'm thinking ahead. And that's the biggest thing, another big thing with skill in Yu-Gi-Oh! is that you want to be thinking turns ahead. You want to be thinking, even while you're playing, you know, game one, how the fuck am I going to side deck against this sprite deck? How am I going to side deck against this tier elements deck, flunder deck, you name it? Having this board set up, no matter what my opponent draws into, He's going to have a three-card hand with a Zeus on board, so he's going to have four cards to his name, minus uh, the Ronin, Toten, and Swap Frog, so we could even call it five cards to his name, that he has to use to break my board without attacking. Because remember, if he attacks Elf or Toad, I can activate Pixies, send it from my field to his grave, and the monster he's attacking will gain attack points equal to the monster's attack. So he would have to attack Pixies first, eliminate that, and then attack over something else. And that may give me the turn that I need to survive. So let's go ahead and see what he draws here. So he draws on Talents. He's going to go for Rodent Toad, and we're like, okay, that's cute. He's going to use Blue. We're going to negate it. He's going to Talents us, which is like, okay, I guess. I mean, we're getting Beaver for the follow-up, plus we're getting Toad back. So even if he Talents, it doesn't matter. So instead, he actually goes for Elf. To bait out our toad, which is a good play. I mean, it's going to grab us a second beaver. Now he's going to go talents to take our elf and make a gigantic at 32. And at this point, I'm pooping my pants because like all I have is a blue. And uh, now he's going to go for jet and get smasher. This is the big creme de la creme play here, ladies and gentlemen. So we draw into Ash Blossom. Now I want you to pause the video and I want you to take a moment to look at the board here. How would you break this board because we're, we're coming up on on finishing up the game here he's got a smasher that's online uh 
He's got Elf. We've got Ash and Double Beaver. Uh, and we've got Blue. So actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and play this out because he does use the Elf to go for Toad. So I'm going to flip the Blue. And I figured as soon as I made a play, he was going to use it to get Toad. And that's fine. So now this is the, actually the big portion here of where we start to seal the game. So he's got a Toad online. That's going to be a negate and a smasher. So we're playing through two interruptions. The elf's been used. Pause the video right now and you tell me how you would play through this. Here's our extra deck. This is everything that we've got to work with. Okay. And then here is our graveyard. We've got a swap in Ronin lined up with a totally awesome in grave. So go ahead and pause the video and tell me what you would do. Okay. Are you back? Here's what I ended up deciding to do. So... We go ahead and go Rodent Toad. I'm trying to bait out a Negator the Smasher here. I end up summoning the Elf, and I actually wait here for a minute, and I'm trying to decide what's going to be the way that we break this board and hopefully get him to use up the Smasher. I end up summoning Beaver and activating the effect. And my reasoning for this is that if he negates with Toad, we still have the Elf lined up just that we can shotgun at any point because if he uses the toad to negate the beaver he almost kind of has to because we have a beaver in grave so we can go anything into our extra deck or hell even use like elf or even both beavers to go into like mask arena and make access code like we we have plays that we can make so i i end up going for beaver and he does shotgun the toad there is no way I'm going to wait to use Elf. I'm going to instantly chain Elf here to go for the totally awesome. And if we actually do it step by step here, you see that he activates Smasher. And in my mind, I'm thinking in the words of Valley D, there's no shot. <laughs> like, there is no chance that he doesn't use the Smasher here to hit my Elf. Because it's still going to resolve off board. But he knows if he doesn't use it now, that he's never going to get to use it. Because now I've got Totally Awesome. But notice that I summon the Beaver first to try and get him to use the Toad. And that's what was key. Because he knew, well, if this guy goes for the Beaver, he's got two Beavers and an Elf. I'm kind of fucked. Because if he goes Smasher and hits a Beaver... Okay, that's cute. I still have one beaver and one elf. So I'm obviously not going to use the elf because you've got toad. So he goes ahead and banishes. He hits the elf and he hits his rodent toad. That's fine. We go for toad. Now we're in the driver's seat. He's got a fucking beaver and he has no other beavers to build a motherfucking dam with. So now he's going to send back the toad, which is like fine, whatever. You take 800. I'm sitting on an ash. And a toad. So now I'm the one in the driver's seat with two negates. I'm like, bitch, you out of the driver's seat. We're the one driving this car now, bitch. And sure enough, what does he do? He draws into a D shifter and he scoops because he has no plays. He's got nothing in his grave. And had I played out that turn differently, had I decided to go elf, use the effect of elf, and like try and revive something just to bait out the negate of Toad. Like I'm losing the game and then they still have Smasher. And this is something that I feel like a lot of people that hate on modern Yu-Gi-Oh don't necessarily see these moments of technical play or these more advanced lines of play when they just say, you know, oh, modern Yu-Gi-Oh sucks. I'm going to go play old school Yu-Gi-Oh because in old school Yu-Gi-Oh, you do have a lot of those things. You have things like mind games and, you know, different ways to try and, you know, outplay the opponent. But in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, especially when you're in a grind game, which may not happen often, but you want to have the knowledge and foresight on how to play the grind game correctly, you end up in situations like this where you don't necessarily win by turn two. You may win by turn three, four, five, or in this turn, or in this case, turn six, and you need to know how to properly play the grind game, especially in a mirror match that just wants to set up a bunch of negates as quickly as it can and just get all of the gas gas that it can to the floor and just go gassing all the way without stopping for gas. Like, you know what I mean? Inflation is crazy up in this bitch. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about this replay down in the comments. Do you think it was skillful? Do you think it was more luck? I feel like it was very skill-based. I mean... If, if you know a deck inside and out and you know it like the back of your hand, you're going to have moments like this where you feel that you make very skillful plays. And it comes through playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, getting better at the game, and proving to yourself that you can get better and not just saying, oh, this format sucks, I'm going to rage quit. No, take the time to try and learn the format, see the intricacies of it, see what the problems are, and see what you can do to combat against those problems. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.